Welcome to part four on the MG engine. We're sort of cleaning it up and making it look a bit more presentable. Oh, apparently it's part three. Welcome to part three. Part four is, I thought it would take four parts to do it. And I always lose track of the parts I'm doing. And what I'm, videos I'm making is I'm basically doing four lots um, at the same time. You can go. So in this one, we have all our engine bits painted. Most of our engine bits painted. My little gun has died and I've had to order another one, so I haven't finished really doing that sort of stuff, but you know, I'm waiting on a few parts, which is the normal thing I say at the start of these videos, and still waiting on parts, but ugh, that's the way of it, you know, I mean, I've got a lot of other projects at the same time running, so it's all good. So, this is quite long, again, another long one, sorry if it's too long, a lot of people don't mind the long ones, but I know when I watch videos on YouTube um, from other creators, sometimes the long ones do get a bit boring, so you can uh, the good thing about it, of course, you can just move your mouse up and get to the bits you want to see. So, anyway, look, hope you enjoy. Is that going to focus? Yes, this is the reason I mask everything up. It just gives a much cleaner line and looks more like a it's professional. Ugly. I love it. Because it, it gives more of a clean line and looks more professional. Because you're ugly. I know I'm ugly, but we're not looking at me, we're looking at the engine. Because you're ugly. Alana, knock it off. <laughs> How good is that? I love it. I'm very, very pleased indeed. Paint your hair. <laughs> do you guys want to knock it off while I do this? <laughs> so you can see you've got some of the tinware back. Timing cover for the MG. It's been sandblasted. The, the, probably the gentlest approach for this sort of kit is to get them hydroblasted. Hydroblasting is expensive though. I've just had it. I think, I think it's sandy use. I'm not sure. And we're just going around. Knock the tops off it and you can see... That makes it nice and smooth, really smooth. Um, and it's important on the inside as well, sort of all around these areas here, and we give it a good clean with prep soil. We just don't want any foreign matter um, marring up, you know, marring our engine. So, I mean, we've got that. The thing I don't like, though, is the sump. It's been smacked in here. And on the outside, it really doesn't look too good. We've got... A big gouge and all these deep pits um, from corrosion. Uh, ideally I'd like to replace that, I don't like it, but um, even the idea of knocking that out, it's got a very sharp sort of crease there and I don't want to rupture it. So that would only be very thin in that area there. So I might, um, I might go with it and I might not. But uh, yeah, there's that as well. So we've got that. Um, as I said, not that we're wrapped. Um, and of course, side cover. I didn't have the other one done. The one with the breather on it. I didn't want any media getting caught in it. And of course, the rocket cover slash valve cover. This is the Walsley one. This has come up well. I'm very happy with that. Um, it was a mess. It had multiple coats of paint and what sort of stuff. Yeah, it yields a pretty good result. So we can edge prime these now. All right, on the floor now because I've run out of bench space, which is really sad. I'm just going to dust off any of the foreign stuff that I sanded off before. This is an old touch-up gun. These things are 30 or 40 bucks online. I've had this one for years, lost the lid. A bloke in the club gave me a Pentax lens cover which fitted beautifully, but I don't know what I've done with it. That's the back of a light switch. You can fill it and keep using it. Um, better buying products like this in a can, you reduce it, or in other words, you thin it, and you get much better than you do with a, an aerosol. And you also get to dial up the thickness you want, actually. I'll just, you should always stir paint, never shake it. Which is why I just didn't shake it. Hang on, I've got to put the lid on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go outside, and... Whoops. Because I've got no room in here to do this sort of stuff anymore because I'm an idiot and I've got too many cars and bikes and all this sort of crap. And I don't want to get overspray at anything. Although, having said that, this is acrylic, so it dries very, very quickly straight off the gun. So, there it is there. It's only watery when you put it on. Can you see that? That dripping. You don't want it thick. Even that may be a little bit too thick. And we'll just stick some in the gun. Some people paint it 50 pounds, some people paint it 30 pounds. I just paint. But that, whatever that is. Oh. 
Even this might be a bit too thick. Okay, so again, we always stir, we never ever shake. But this is air dry now. Well, I've talked about this stuff before. You can paint it on a day like today really easily. Um, stays wet for a long time, yada yada yada. Now, it's a bit too thick to come in a gun there. I'm just going to pop some in a jar. Maybe a bit more. Um, the reason for that is because if we decide to um, brush touch or do anything like that with the paint, we want to keep that nice and thick. Um, of course, when you reduce it or when you thin it, it's not really very good for touching up with a brush. Um, for whatever reason, it just goes too thin. Now the problem with this stuff, that's very gluggy, and some paints reduce, I mean, I think acrylic's supposed to be um, one and a half part thinner to one part paint, which is very watery. Uh, this stuff, if you did that, you'd never ever cover anything with it. So I'm literally going to just pour a spot of thinners in. That's it. And then find the lid, which is here. I'll try and do it in a circular motion so we don't aerate the crap out of it. But even if you aerate, it's going to shoot through a gun and all those bubbles are going to be popped anyway. But that's, oh, that's a tiny, tiny bit too thick, but it's not bad. And I only put a spot in, so I'm just going to add another spot. Just like that, you really don't need too much. And of course, if you make the error of um, putting it in the can and you get too much in, your paint's useless, you can't do much with it. So, I'm tipping. That's fine. I don't know if you can see how, oh, there's a hair in there, that's not good. Oh, where is it? That's about right there. So, let's see if she covers. <laughs> Whether, even if I thin it too much, I only literally put a spot of thinner in, so very, very little. So I'll just pump that lid on, and we'll go outside and we'll shoot. Now, this stuff covers so well. It's amazing how well it covers, and I'll, I'll do a really stupid demonstration in a sec. All right, so we're ready to start shooting this. And you can see how well that covers. Um, give me some demonstration. You have a relatively small turd here, and gee. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, if your dog passed something like that, you'd probably get to check the bell cancer, but this, this, this enamel stuff, absolutely brilliant. So, sorry if that offended anyone, but you can literally paint anything with this. So, let's get to the business of it. We should really just do the first coat thing. I might just move some of this stuff. No, oh, I've got pain inside. I didn't mask it off, I'm so slack. Oh well, I'll give it a, a wipe out with some thinner later. She'll be right. But I love this because in this weather, you wouldn't dare hit that with acrylic because it would dry before, you know, before it hit the thing. And this would be dead. So that is looking reasonably splendid. Right, you can see we've painted the rocker cover. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? Just sitting there to dry. Well, it's touch dry now, but it's, um, you get the picture. Um, additional tinware is here, side cover and timing case cover. Um, we've done that. But the sump looks rubbish. <laughs> it doesn't look very good at all, does it? But at the end of the day, it's underneath. It didn't leak, so hopefully it doesn't leak now. So I think we're in a pretty good position. All right, rock cover. The rock cover we've got. Um, it's nice and dry, it's lovely and clean. It's all good. We um, need to put some transfers on, some stickers now. This has come up very well. It's a beautiful uh, finish in air dry enamel, of course. It doesn't mean that there's not slight little lumps and bumps on there. And the problem when you put a sticker on, if you look at this one here, 
is the moment you stick that over, you're going to see a lot more clearly any imperfections than you would otherwise have done. Now, this is just a scrap of 1200, and I'm going to hit it with a spritz bottle. When you buy these, you'll always use these in your workshop. Don't get the um, 50 cent or dollar ones from the reject shop because they'll fail. They're rubbish. Um, this is a Brunnings one, a proper gardening one. Uh, and they last forever. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of water on there. And there was, here, yeah, there. Just any, anything that's sticking up, just iron off. It's going to take some of the sheen off in that area, but it won't stop the sticker or transfer. We're not caught sitting there. There's even a little dent there anyway, so it's not going to be perfect. But at the end of the day, that's going to be fine. And you can see it has dulled a tiny bit in that area, but and a bit there, but it's not going to be a big deal. The other thing to do is just a very, very fine mist on there. And then we need to place it. I'm going to turn this on an angle so I can see where I am. Actually, just a sec. I'm changing my glasses. I mentioned in another video, my eyesight's rubbish, and a lot of people have commented on it, saying that... Um, Maybe a bit another prescription. Right. Oh, this is thin. Oh, I'm going to make a hatch of it. I'm going to run up the centre and just rub out. Oh gosh, I think I've got that crooked. Have I got that crooked? I think I might have that crooked. Whatever the case, it'll be right. And we're just going to iron it back over like that. These things stick well. There we go. That's going to be fine. It might be a tiny bit crooked, is it? I don't think we're going to notice that though. Okay. Already looks better now, doesn't it? These might not even be the right ones for the, the this model. I'm not sure. You can get aluminium ones, which is what's supposed to be there, because this has holes in it for rivets. Um, so there's supposed to be a sort of a plate. Now this isn't going to look that great unfortunately, but at the end of the day, I'm not ooh, that worried about it. So I'm just going to get a pot rivet. Ooh, no, maybe I won't do it that way. Maybe just break through it there. And we'll stick a rivet in to make it look like a plate, hey? Good news and bad news, that one went well and I mucked that one up there. But really those rivets are there more to stop the thing leaking. But that'll do for now, that's going to be fine. Now of course we've just got this gasket sitting there, this is the one that was hanging up in the garage for 10 years. Um, with things like this it's probably easier to put a tiny bit of contact adhesive with a Q-tip or a cotton bud, whatever you want to call it, around here, give it a spray on there as well and just stick it down. At the end of the day though, this is just an exercise of stopping muck getting in the engine and this will be removed again, the cover will be removed again when it comes time to fit the engine because we don't, obviously don't want to scratch it. And David took it off when he took the engine off anyhow, so, or took it out I should say. So we're just gonna pop these on and they just sort of pop over and then we have one of those little guys. These bolt kits you get, and I've had this one for a while, actually come with a spacer as well. It's arguable whether you're gonna need that or not. Um, I think the answer is yes, you will need it. So I'm just gonna pop them in just for now. Um, just to hold the cover there and give it a bit of bling, I suppose. But that'll do. All we need to do is just stick that there as a temporary thing and it'll keep the engine a bit cleaner. Somebody commented on one of my videos that sounds like I live next to a zoo. <laughs> and I'm not going to disagree with that. Oh, it's got that tinware here. I'm just going to move. What's that? Oh, a bit of... Oh, it's the powder off the glove sitting on the casting. Anyway, I'm going to put that under there. Got to make up a gasket for this because the gasket kit we got for our engine is the lower gasket kit, not the head. Or VRS there, I should say. And of course, there's a side coming. I'm going to put one of those on at the moment because the other one... 
these were media blasted and we weren't media blasting the other side it's the vent i didn't want any sand or muck or anything getting in it so i'm a big advocate for permatex which is this stuff here they call it aviation permatex comes in a jar with a little nail brush on the end of it and we want to just use this stuff sparingly it has a way of looking untidy if you use too much and it oozes out everywhere but at the end of the day oil won't leak past it nor will coolant if you've got the surfaces adequately prepared it's just the best stuff you can use and the other thing is it's cheap it's like six or whoops six or eight bucks for a jar as you see here they used to make the jars a bit smaller i've already done this badly but i'll just put some on the block and we can pop that on this um gasket here will stretch over I'm just doing that. Here I'll do it too tight. Of course, while I'm at it, I'll just pop these studs in. Let's look at the studs. They're 5 16ths fine on both ends. Um, the shallow end is the bit that's going to go in the head. I might just do them together. My stomach's going mental. I'll lock those two together with a spanner. We just get two half inch spanners and lock them together. Just squeeze them together like that, that's cool. Oops, and then we can just spin the things in. I might use a socket actually because I don't want to risk a spanner flying off and scratching the paintwork on our engine. We have to do this tight, they just sit in there like that. I'll just undo them. When you're undoing spanners and that, that sort of thing, it's better sort of doing it up and undoing it by squeezing them together, positioning them so you can squeeze them together. Quite often mechanics will knuckle themselves by um, reefing on something and then letting it go and of course you knuckle yourself that way. And it's just better practice to do it the other way. I'm just going to pop those there like that. That's a lock washer and the nut. We're not going to be putting the carburetors and manifolds on in this chapter because there's a lot to do. Uh, between now and then so it just prepares us for when that comes and again we just pop them in they should go in very very easily like that i mean they shouldn't bind up i'm not that fast particularly um it probably would have even been better to put a bit of anti seize on there but um that's these are a clean metal they're not um, they're not plated. If they were plated, um, I would put anti seize on because of the different metals you can get oxidization and a bit of electrolysis, and of course, they can gall when you go to remove them. Oh, I'm just doing that like that so we can squeeze them together, take them off, and that way we're not going to slip off and knuckle ourselves. Um, the plating's back, which is taking us a little while to get this chapter back out. They're the SIRs that hold the manifolds on, and we'll just put one of them. And a lock washer and then when we get our manifolds back we can do that i've got to get the intake hydro blasted the exhaust manifold is getting ceramic coated at the moment i had it um sandblasted and the cast iron will rust before your eyes once the sandblasting is done and so you put a two-pack etch over it but that will burn off and i was going to use exhaust paint you know what i just thought what the heck we'll do it properly do it once so It'll just look a bit better in the last longer, even though on these engines you only see sort of the front leg of it. I'm going to pop these plugs back in. That's the pressure relief. So we've got a nice big spring and of course the cap of the copper washer, which comes in the kit. And we'll just do that up. And by planning it just looks so much more finished off. Good, that looks much nicer. There we go, got the right tripod now. Doesn't it look nice? Not sure if the camera's level with this. This is this lovely little drain cock that we um, did a repair on, or sort of spruced it up. Uh, Pauline Hunter, a member of our club, commented on this. She found it um, to look pretty good. 
She has an A60 Cambridge, and she was the one that I would love to have sold mine to. I sold it um, because Mother had sold her property in Park Orchards where it was being stored, and another chap bought it who eventually joined the club anyway. Um, that feels a little stiff. I might. Yeah, I don't know if I'm happy with that. But she's Pauline's the one I would love to have sold it to. I was going to pop that out and take a look at that thread. What with this? This was ganged with two fibre washers before because it doesn't screw in that far. So I'm going to have to revisit that. I'm going to bother about it for now. This gallery here, this is for the oil cooler. And I've had this electrode plated. You can see it looks nice. But the problem is this spigot here doesn't fit. It's just a tiny bit too thick. So I'm just going to run that down with a bit of 1200. Um, and that should just slot in nicely then. We can put this in. This is for your pressure gauge. Just make sure that gasket stays central. There's a sort of a step in it, I think. We don't need to drop in the galleries. And this other thing's being a real pain. The thing with it is, it's. Um, if you get them plated, you've got to be prepared to take all that plating off. And it's such a tight fit in there, and you don't want it to seize up in there. I'll we'll just plug those up. I don't have one for this, so I'm just going to use a bit of tape and bung just to stop any nonsense. Finding its way into those very precious little oil galleries. Now, oh, for a second, be there just for good measure. There we go. A pain, this thing. This is the dipstick tube, of course. Let's put a bit of anti squeal on it. Anti squeal? I think it's anti season. Isn't it? And we've got to get this in. Let's put roses here. Hang on. This is going to be a pain because I had trouble getting it out. And there's a very high probability I'm going to have trouble getting it in. Let's sit there. It's just horrendously. It's easy to break them, and if they break, it's a pain because they're stuck in there. I just need a large screw stick. This isn't in properly, and it's probably going to shave bits off and drop them in the sump, which isn't there. I believe that's it. Cool. Okay, I think that'll do. We'll just give it a bit of a wipe down there so it's nice and clean. And of course, we've got this... Um, oil filter canister here and it's got a spring and a sort of a flat washer at the bottom of it which presses up against the filter Let's put that in really we should get um spring goes over and then that goes in there i think that's how it goes and then the cartridge filter goes in which i don't have at the moment there's an o-ring up in there which should be replaced. There's also one in there that we need to replace as well. That doesn't look that clean over there, but for the purpose of a little demonstration, this whole thing screws up into the block like that. And then we just adjust it to the trajectory of the oil, what do you call it? Cooler. I've lost my um, 5 16th fine tap. I can't find it anywhere. I think this bracket goes here, goes this way, it's for the back of the generator. I've deliberately kept this engine um, sort of period, you know what I mean? I didn't want a um, an alternator and I didn't want anything modern on it. The only thing modern ooh, is the, what's it called? Oh, the electronic ignition module. So that's just going to sit there. I can't put the water pump on because my gun's died. So just a matter of fitting up whatever we can. At the... I can't even remember which do which. Uh, I think this is the right one here, but if it's wrong, it really doesn't matter. I'll figure it out when I get everything else on. I just can't paint any of the other ancillaries at the moment because I'm waiting on that gun to arrive. Is that going to go in? What's going on here? There we go. I haven't even got spark plugs yet. I've still got the old ones where I've painted. Right. I want to talk about my guns. I'm not talking about muscles because I haven't got any. I've got two guns. A full-size gun, like this, and we've got a little touch-up gun. Now, pretty much everything I do is with a touch-up gun. The only time you need a full-size full gun, I should say, is either you're painting a car or maybe a garden shed or a bird aviary, whatever. You would use a big gun like that. The rest of it using this. 
Now, this one the lid broke some time ago, and I'm using the back of a light switch, which was good because the paint wouldn't splash out, you could just pour it in the top, and of course lots of air could get in to displace the um, paint that was coming out. The um, valve was knackered, so it was um, giving trouble for a while, and um, the air would stay on, but I could regulate the paint coming out by just, you know, as I'm painting, doing that sort of thing, and it all worked well, and it did paint really well. Now, this is a Chinese gun. I bought it at Bunnings all those years ago. What are we up to? 11 years ago now. And I paid about 60 bucks. Now, the same thing online is about 20. So I've just ordered another one. When you order guns like that, you would, or any article for that matter, if it is Chinese, that's cool. But um, this one's not. I don't know where that one's from. You would order them through a local supplier. And that way you get them within a few days or a week or so. Otherwise, you're waiting for Chinese mail, which can be six weeks. Now, everything I've painted on this engine, including the tins, there and the rock cover which you've seen before the bike engine all of that has been painted with a gun with a small gun the xc engine here painted with a small gun the plymouth engine a small gun the xw's engine small gun as well if you're into restoring motorbikes or push bikes or whatever and you need to paint the frame again you'd use a small gun this has been powder coated this one but i have absolutely thrashed that gun within an inch of its life so it doesn't owe me anything and what's happened now because i can't use it is I can't continue on the engine. So let's take stock of what we've got. We've got the um, timing case painted, but the balancer isn't. And I'm not going to tighten the timing case up until I've centered it on the balancer. So we've got to paint the balancer, we've got to paint the water pump. Uh, I've got to paint the side cover with the vent on it, this one down here. I've got to paint the starter motor, the generator. There's the side cover I was talking about a minute ago there. And also, of course, the rear plate behind that green bottle. That's got to be painted as well because the rear's off the engine and I can't put that on either. So looking at it now, there's not much else we can do. We've come about as far as we can with this engine. I need to, I'm dropping stuff. I need to get spark plugs for it and a uh, fan belt. I need to get that. And I need to sort out that water tap down there with the thicker washer. It had two uh, fiber washers going on top of one another. I need to do that. And of course, I also want to, also want to paint the fan blades, give them another coat of yellow. So not a lot we can do, but I have just thought of one thing. And of course, I'm referring to this. And when we get that, because what, what we've done, we've got a lower engine gasket kit for the G. We haven't got the upper one, so of course, all the head gasket, that sort of thing is included, which we didn't need. But one thing that's really good to get is a roll of oil jointing. It's very cheap. And you make your own gasket. Now, the thing about it is, I could buy a gasket for that which would be about two bucks, and that's all good, but the postage would be whatever. A lot of people on eBay tend to rip off with postage, and you pay a lot more for postage than you do for the article, and we can't be fagged doing that, so we're just going to draw around this and make another one. This only goes one way too, there's a little dog leg cut out of it. But now we can see where we're going to start punching holes. Now the other thing um, MG do is the rebate for the thermostat itself is in the block, it's not on the top here, so you don't need to worry about that, you just cut it the same size as that. I didn't even have the um, camera on when I was talking. Um, just used a wad punch, bang bang bang, all the way around. I used a carpenter's hammer on there, which is a no-no, you've got to use an engineer's hammer. But the engineer's hammer is 13 or 14 feet away, away from where I'm standing now, and I couldn't be bothered getting it. Rather good. That'll fit, and that'll work well. Awesome. So then what we do is put those back in the kitchen, because Susie will skim me, and we use some good old-fashioned Permatex. I'm just going to put that there so I remember exactly where it went. This stuff's gold. I love Permatex. And I don't want it poking out the edges. I'm just going to go around the inside here. If you use Permatex, and it's like, I don't know if I mentioned before, it's only six or seven bucks a bottle. When you get a leak, whether it be coolant or oil, after you've used that, there's a problem. Because normally you will never ever have trouble with it. That's that rebate I was telling you about. It sits in there beautifully. And then that should fit there. 
with any freaking luck, and then that will go down there. And it does. Look at that. It does look a bit amateurish. I might just dice that with a, um, what's it called? Razor blade. That's the one. I just thought I might need to put a flat there. Yeah, that looks better. Um, these are 5 sixteenths. Fine. I wanted to, um, I kind of wanted to replace these studs, but they looked like they were stuck in the head pretty hard. And I thought, you know what? Stuff. Hey, hey, that's not good. Um, I didn't want to. I just thought, I can't be bothered going through all that. Because at the end of the day, the only reason I'd be doing it is so I can't see the top of it. Let us just cut that off. That looks better. Maybe cut around here, eh? And then we'll miss and slash the rocket cover. That would be really funny, wouldn't it? Oh, crap. Just like that. <coughs> Maybe a bit of prep sole or something to get that excess permatex off. That looks very good. Excellent. And if you do decide to clean up with Prepsol, make sure it's Prepsol you've got in your hand, not thinner, because then you'll wipe all your paint off. Look at that. Doesn't look nice? Mmm, very nice. I love these little engines. Cool. I'm sort of entering a spot now I really don't know too much about. I know a lot about tea, but I don't know much about these. SUs. I'm just sort of looking through all these carburetor bits. I kind of pulled them all apart to get these bits plated. Um, I didn't photograph anything, I never do. I, people always say you got to take lots and lots of photos so you can remember to put it together. But every time I take photos, I take photos of something that just misses the thing I'm looking for. So I don't bother taking them. So we've got these linkages, where the bits that go with linkages, there's a bit of fuel T piece between each carburetor. So I'll throw them back in there. I will worry about that later, but I do want to start having a look at them now. Oh, that's not good. We've got the float, the carburetor assembly with the bowl. Whoops. And of course, we've got this little, um, I don't know what it's called now, the dash pot thing. And a spring. And we've got to try and clean these up. Now, the problem, the short side of part about all this is that the linkages are going to look nice and clean and the cupboard is going to look crap. And that's just dust, I think. I'm not sure what that is. And so I can't remember how these go together, and I don't really care because I'll figure it out. We, the only problem these cupboard has had, it ran like a Swiss watch, this thing. It ran really, really well. Was periodically we would get the overflows kicking into action and fuel running down past the exhaust out of the overflow. So, got some new needles and seats. We're not going to kick them out. We're just going to clean them up and put them back on. So I'll start with this dirty one. That's really mangy. Of course, this, I think I mentioned in a past chapter, was um, painted the, well, the engine bay was painted with the engine in situ. So, of course, there's overspray there as well. I did that. Very unprofessional. And... What do you do? There's the choke there. So I'll work that bit out. I'll try and get that bit of gasket off. And uh, we will make a start cleaning these up. I'm just going to see how stuck that is. Here we go. That's going to be too hard to get off. Of. I must say, if this was a thermoquad, maybe a quadrajet, a holly, whatever, I'd know what I'm doing. But this is an SU, so I have as bad as much knowledge as a newborn baby where it comes to this sort of thing. I just don't know what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out. I'm not worried about it. Just got the gasket off here. You don't need to know much about getting a gasket off. The only thing you need to know is when you're doing this and you're going to come off, you're going to cut yourself. So you just always keep an eye on that. Um, carby clean. This isn't carby clean at all. This is brake clean. Dirty toothbrush. But we can go in there and mince around and clean it out. It's going to be reasonably easy to clean from the look of it, this thing. Um... Yeah, not too bad. There's a bit of grot down the bottom. I'm worried there's a jet down there. That's the intake. Yeah, where are we? Just in there. Where's my torch? This might make it easier. Oh, look. Okay, that little protrusion at that end is where the intake is for the jet. Up in here. Got to be very careful I don't fill that up with grot. I just want to clean out down the bottom there. 
so that's cool. I'm just going to go around, clean it up, and soaking it's going to be better all day, every day, it's going to work better than what I'm doing. But at the end, but you can sort of clean it up fairly well with this. Not great, but better than nothing. I try and use old thinner before anything else because it's abundant. Whereas brake cleans, what's that? Is it brake clean? Yeah, it's brake clean. Carby clean, whatever you're using, is a lot more expensive than used thinners. So it's probably not a bad idea just to brush around it and then hit it with this stuff, and you can see how lovely it comes up there. So that's all I'm doing. And it's just about saving a quid, really. Um, doing it on the cheap if we can. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. What do you do? Well, that was the dirtier of the two. This was the good one. So it does look a bit better. It looks a lot better. There you go. Right, so we've got our parts here. We've got the body, which looks fairly good. Would look better if this is all plated, but I didn't bother taking these out. I didn't want to upset the settings. As much as I thought this was peachy, there is an issue with it because I can feel a tiny bit of... I can feel some movement in the throttle shaft. And that's not good. That means it's going to suck air, it's going to run lean. So they do eventually, or they will eventually, need to be reconditioned properly. But uh, for now, you know what? I've got bikes and cars everywhere. I need to get this thing in one piece, get it running. And then, of course, we can address that sort of thing later. I'm not concerned with it. Um, and what I've also got is a little bit of plating. These are the throttle uh, shaft pieces, the, the, what do you call it, linkages for the throttle and also the... Um, Choke, of course, I know what that does. That goes, God, no, it doesn't. That goes there. Ha uh ha, -huh. look at that. With the washer and split pin, and up goes on there and holds the throttle cable. That's pretty easy. I can figure that out. These ones over here, um, 12 of them, three, six, nine, 12 for the second carby as well. They hold the bowl, of course, and the or the needle and seat and the dash pot on. And of course, I've no idea how this goes together. I'm just going to wing it and see if I can stick the thing together and make good of it. We have a, a saying in Australia, Australian culture, which is, she'll be right. And even if you have no idea what you're doing, the way to get around that is just saying, mate, she'll be right. That's what we all do. So even when there's times that are tough and we cannot fathom how on earth we're going to get through something, you guessed that the standard answer is she'll be right. For example, where the nut is for this. Don't know, mate, but she'll be right. So we'll figure it out. It is literally all good. Uh, but before we uh, start putting it together, we just want to figure this thing out here. Right, yeah, so we've got a uh, float level of 3.2 to 4.8 millimetres, which is a starting point. There's all sorts of complexities with these carburetors and quite a complicated little arrangement. So they're a, a, quite a specialist job. I'm just looking at this here, and that is actually worn. It's got a lip in it, that cone there, I can feel it. I can actually feel it. So I need to pop that out and replace it with these spiffy new items here. So we'll get into that now. And of course, I've had these for a couple of years and never, <laughs> never got around to putting them in. So I'll just unscrew that. Interestingly, there's no washer. I was disappointed when I saw on the um, replacement there was no copper washer or fiber washer, um, which I thought was quite interesting. But I'm going to pop these out. And I can't return these because I've had them for yonks. And I just want to check the height of them and have a good look to make sure everything looks okay, which it does. Hmm. Hmm. AUD, Australian dollars. That's what this car has cost me. Put this little bloke in. Interestingly, this has a spring loaded pintle on it, and the new one doesn't. Ideally, a new gasket kit would be very beneficial for this thing. You can get them quite reasonably, but I think what we'll do eventually is we will have the things rebuilt properly. Does it go that way? I think it does. That's the fuel in. That's the overflow. 
I think it goes this way. And these didn't have... That one's got a washer on it. These ones didn't. Give it a whirl. I'm just going to use a bit of transmission fluid. Just lubricate it a bit. Probably completely unnecessary, but... Um, maybe put some around here too, hey? And of course we use it in the dash pot part there. Oh, what do we got? All right, that goes in there. Slides very, very easily. I'm thinking there. No, that is incorrect. So we'll rotate it around to there. I think that's where it goes. So, pop some screws in. And that should mark the end of one carburetor for now. I think this is something we're going to have to revisit, but for now, I don't want to. <laughs> I just want to get the thing going. Nice and free. That's cool. And of course, when we fit, then we put a bit of training fluid in there, just a tiny bit, and it'll gurgle. I had on watch on eBay for a long time the brass tops for those. And because my engine bay looks so rubbish, I never bother getting them. I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> I'm literally thinking. The more bling I can have, the better. Um, although, you know, there's something really nice about a standard looking engine bay. But um, this will do for now. I think this will do. As long as it starts and runs as well as it did. For now, I'm not too fussed. But, oh, look, it's dirty in there. I haven't cleaned in there too well. Look at that. Hang on a sec, let me just spruce that up. Oh, that's all right. I think it'll be all right. This was the rear carburetor. So it'll sort of sit something like that. So it doesn't look as good as the rest of the engine, but um, I think it's gonna be fine for now. I think that's cool. So I think on that note, we'll let it go. We won't do any more. I'll do this one, the next one, sorry. Uh, in a moment, I'll start on it. Yeah, that's a complete lie. I'm going to leave it because I really didn't enjoy doing this. And I'm going to go inside and put this uh, video together to release. So, in the next one, we'll have the gun so I can finish painting and put the rest of it together. Um, hopefully, we'll have the exhaust manifold back, which has been ceramic coated as well. The other thing is that, well, one thing I haven't done, of course, is I haven't had that um, hydro blasted yet, which is dumb. Anyway, whatever the case. Uh, until then, drive safely, enjoy a classic, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.